I hope you're sitting comfortably. This is going to be a long one. Hi everyone, it's Mike here. So today is a little bit special for me because the house is completely quiet. Ian's out on a business trip all day. Mr Bentley has had a very, very long walk this morning so is fast asleep on the couch and has no signs of moving for the foreseeable future. So I thought I'd sneak upstairs and have a play. Now today I wanted to have a play with some resources that I've had in my possession for quite some time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to my overhead camera and I'll show you what I'm going to be doing. So these are the images that I've had in my possession for quite some time. Now I have got almost a complete alphabet right the way through A to Z apart from I'm missing a W. So I've recently um, found the P that I was missing and I was also missing a Q but I've recently found those from the same set. So I now have a complete alphabet. And because they're printable digits, um, I can resize them. As you can see, I've resized um, the letters, I've printed them out small, and then these ones I've done in a large size. So I want to play with these today. But uh, I'm using a sheet of um, watercolour card. So this is the, the thick stuff that I normally use, the £140 or 300 GSM watercolour card stock. But I wanted to do um, something which had some texture today. So, and some neutrals. I wanted to play with some neutrals. So I've dug out a collection of bits and pieces already. So I've got a couple of number eight Ranger Manila craft tags. I have some corrugated cardboard that I've just ripped in half. So I've got two pieces of that. I have a piece of burlap that I've dug out from somewhere. I have no idea where this came from. It could have been Happy Mail or it could have just been gifted to me because um, this isn't the sort of thing that I would normally buy. A couple of small tags that definitely came in um, Happy Mail. I have some book text and I've also got um, two sheets of composition book paper that are Quite grungy. It looks like they've had tea dye or tea or coffee or whatever spilled on them and then they've been dried. So I thought that I would use all this lot to create some nice texture in the background of my art journal page. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some layering first of all using um, spirit glue so this is the stuff that gives you a little bit of a wiggle room before it dries. So you've got time to manoeuvre it to get it in the right position before it grabs. I've got a Ranger collage glue stick. And for the heaviest stuff, i.e. the burlap, I've got some Indigo Blue Super Thick Slap It On Gel Medium. So this is a gloss gel medium. So it's all white until it goes dry and then it goes completely clear. And it is extremely thick as you can see. So I'm going to be using that to, to stick down some of the items. And then once I've got everything stuck down, I'm gonna start throwing some color at it. So what I also thought I was gonna do is actually do this in real time. So rather than speed through it, I'm gonna do it in real, real time and talk while I'm doing it. Or in my case, ramble and babble incoherently. Probably, possibly. So. Let's get started. So I'm going to just start by sticking down these pieces of composition paper first. So I'll just get some glue. And I'm not bothered about getting right to the edges. So if it starts curling up, that's fine. It just adds to the texture. Now, I don't, did I mention the size of this watercolour cardstock that I'm using? This is eight inches by 12. Now that was a conscious decision to use that size. I have an art journal that is that size, this is it, um, but also this means that if I want to I can scan the art journal page afterwards and turn it into a 6x4 postcard because 8x12, if you have that, gives you postcard size. So I'm going to stick that one down like so. Like I said, I'm not bothered about the pages, the corners, all that kind of stuff. 
I want a little bit of that rough texture on the edges to come through. So they're stuck down. Next we'll do tags. Now before we do those tags, I'm going to add a bit of colour. So this is Potting Soil Archival Ink. So I'm just loading up my blending foam and then I'm just going to go around the edges and add a bit of dirt and grunge because that's just the kind of mood I'm in today. So we're going to do a nice kind of grungy, dirty, see and I can add some of that just onto there just to add a bit of colour while I've got it in. So that's going to be one and then we'll do the other one. Of course I can add, I'm going to put some colour over the top of these as well so we will be doing some splatters and some dribbles and other such lovely messiness. Now, if you can hear anything in the background the camera might not be able to pick it up but I have actually got the radio playing downstairs because I don't like to leave Mr Bentley on his own down there without having some kind of background noise. Okay so book text. That's book text too but we need to get these stuck down first so I'm just dropping these on, I'm not really planning where everything's going because I might actually just change my mind as we do it. So next one, I'm running out of the spirit glue. I'm in need of some more. I'll have to go and go to the shop. The spirit glue shop. Uh, the thing with this stuff is it goes all stringy. So the idea was to put that there like so, just overlap slightly. See, you have got a bit of wiggle room, you can maneuver it before it grabs. It's what I like about it. And of course, if you get any on you, like I've just got it all over my hand there, and you rub it, it just balls off, which is cool. Right, okay, so book text. Let's tear some strips of book text. Four pieces there, and again, let's add a little bit of date and a grunge, and let's ball it up a little bit as well. Let's get some creases and wrinkles in there. Again, glue. Let's get some bits over there. Good. Just dropping the ink blending foam in my lap. Not good. Particularly when it's permanent ink. So we've grunged that, scrunched it up. And then grab the glue. Although this is going to be done in real time, I'm obviously um, not wanting to um, take too long over doing the art journal page. Because obviously, if it's over an hour long, nobody's going to watch it. So I am going to try and do this very, very quickly or as quick as I can anyway. <laughs> Crafting in a hurry, or arting in a hurry, if you like. Let's add some more of that up here. I think I'm going to be putting the burlap on there, so I don't really want to add it in the middle where it's not going to be seen. So I'm going to do one more small piece down here.
Now somewhere I've got one of those edge scruffers. And normally it's just left lying out on my desk, but I've had a recent tidy up, and of course, now that I've tidied up, yeah, you guessed it, can't find anything. So let's get some more glue on the back of there. And then, it'd be nice if you could actually see through the burlap when it's done. And it's stuck down. Okay, so that's that. Let's grab that gel medium. And then I'm going to just take some. Now the reason I'm putting the gel medium is because I want it to grab through. Um, have I got something that I can use as a protector? Yes. There we go. So what I want to do is just grab some of that Gel medium, squeeze it just over, a little bit up there. I, I'm aware it's going to go through, but that's okay. Let's get some peaks on there. Lovely. Lift that off and I can wipe that down later. <clears throat> Turn it over and then drop it down like so, there you go. Is that gel medium coming through? That's going to make sure that it grabs. Let's create a few ruttles in there. Okay, so now we've got that, we can also grab some of corrugated card add some of this onto the back too Ooh, we've got green sleeves playing downstairs on the radio it's a thoroughly English piece of music right so let's have some of that there one of my favorite things to do this is clustering and layering particularly when you've actually got no real plan in your head as to what it is that you're going to be doing. I love just setting out on a journey and not really thinking about how it's going to look. So I'm going to overlap that one. So that now steps down that way, so that's good. Me likey that. And that we've got lots of clusters. And then I think... I'm going to add another bit of book text. I think we'll add a little bit of that somewhere around about there. So let's grunge that up. Oh, and of course, let's add a bit of grunge to that cardboard too. I'm going to add some more colour to it so it doesn't make any difference. I don't have to go mad. This is what play is all about. to that. So we've got some grunge going on there. Give it a scrunch and then let's see if we can get some more glue on the back. All good fun. What's that phrase? All good clean dirty fun. Where did that come from? Why am I thinking Dolly Parton? Sure, somebody will let me know in the comments section below if that rings a bell with anybody. So we have a little, little tag. Let's get that dirtied up a bit. Get rid of some of that white and keep the string. Let's add some glue onto the back of there. So let's see. Let's see whether or not that will stay up there. And then we can loop that string round. 
just squash that into that gel medium. Hopefully that will hold that in place. Doesn't matter if it's a little bit loose. And we've got another one here. And we'll do the same thing again. Do that one so it's coming out. Let's see if we can squeeze that underneath, shall we? Like that, and then just grab a little bit of glue. Come on, there we go. And then let's curl that string. Hold that down there. That should do it. Ha <laughs> ha. Excellent. Okay. Not going to add any more to that just yet. Now, obviously, that's going to need to take a little bit of time to dry. So that gel medium and everything just needs to go off a little bit. So I know this is said, well I said that this would be real time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, stop recording and I'm just going to go make myself a cup of coffee because this one's gone cold. Yuck. And by the time I get back that should have dried sufficiently for me to start adding some colour and bits and pieces and my lovely little cherubs onto the card. So I'll be back in a little while. Okay so I'm back and as you can see it's now sufficiently dry enough for me to be able to add some colour. Now as is the case with these kind of things while I was sat thinking and doing a few bits and pieces I decided that actually having the word believe and the word in on there as well as the larger ones. I think it's gonna be a bit too much. So I think I'm going to save those for another day. I'll put those in my alphabet drawer where I keep all my alpha chips and that kind of stuff so that they don't go to waste and I'll save those for another day. Instead, I'm just going to use um, the letters because I think they're big enough um, to give you that nice focal point. Now, while I was waiting, I did just trim off the bottom. So I've only taken a small amount off the bottom. Now each one, as you can see, um, had a bit of, I won't say blank space, but so I've squared it off slightly. So that's what I'm gonna do. So let's move on to adding the color. Now I have some Dina Wakely scribble sticks that I have never used. So I think what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to um, use the scribble sticks and I'm going to add some colour. Now I'm going to play, pay particular attention to blues and the turquoises and maybe some yellows to add the colour. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rub the scribble stick get some colour down on that scribble stick. And then I'm going to activate it with a wet brush. And then we'll see how that works. So I have a paintbrush and let's have a look at some water clean at water and then I'm going to squirt a little bit just on my mat just enough to wet the brush and then we're going to activate that colour so 
I've never used the scribble sticks before. Uh, I kind of thought that they had a bit more pigment in them than that, but that's what happens. You live, you learn. And we start to add bits of colour. Okay, so that blue is started to go a little bit greeny, which is cool. So I'm just going to add a bit more. Now I appreciate that I'm adding dry onto wet. That's fine. Quite liking the way the colours are going a bit muted. Liking that, liking that, just now perhaps the scribble sticks need to be a bit heavier. Let's just try that. Let's get some more water. Liking that. Tones coming through. Likey likey. Okay, let's just try one of the other ones. And let's see whether or not we can actually pick some colour up from the scribble stick. This is the turquoise one. Now this is what a trick that I use sometimes use with the neo colours. So we've got those nice splatters appearing up there. Some more water. Yep, enjoying this. Oh, Mr. Bentley's awake. Hello, sweetie. You coming in? Come on in then. There we go. Hello. Okay. There you go. He's just curled up on the chair next to me. I've just had to clear a space because I've thrown some rubbish on the chair, but there he is. To come up to join his daddy. It's a good boy. Okay, so, so I've got some nice turquoise splatters. I'm liking those. Let's get that brown one. Come on, fingers, do the working. So this is umber. It's quite dark, isn't it? You probably can't see that. So to add some more water. And let's start mixing up the umber and see if we can get some. Look. Yummy colour. I'm 
much water as I can. Try and get some nice blobs. Cool, like that. I think you're probably all going, oh no. But once I've got rid of that, we add a little bit more colour in. Okay, just give it a quick blast with my heat gun. So that's nice and dry now. Like in that. So I can pop those scribble sticks to one side. And then let's have a look at the letters. So we have the L. So you see how that now blends into the background a bit better. So what I've gone ahead and done, when I went down to make the cup of coffee and come back up, while it was still, the gel medium and stuff was still drying, I did find my edge scruffer, which is here. It was right in front of me. I couldn't see it for looking. So what I've done is I've just scruffed up the edges and I've just taken um, the potting soil archive link and gone round the edges. So I've left the L so that you can see how I do it. So I'll just move that to one side. So I'm just taking the scruffing tool. Now you can do this with the blade of a pair of scissors just as easy if you haven't got a scruffing tool. And I'll show you how I do that with the scissors. So I get a blade and then literally just rub the blade along the edge of the paper. And that gives you the same effect as the machine or that little tool there. So if you haven't got one of those little scruffing tools, you can still do it by using a blade or a pair of scissors. But be careful, you are using a blade. I know you're grown-ups. If you're not a grown-up, make sure you've got permission from a grown-up. I've switched back to the scruffing tool. The scruffing tool, obviously the blades are completely enclosed so it's safer. There you go. So I've scruffed up the edges. I've taken my potting soil archival link and then literally just gone around the edges. To add a little bit of distress, grunge, and faux aging. So I'll bring those over the back and you can see that now fits in with the rest. So I can put that archive link to one side. The trouble with doing edge scruffing like that is you get bits of paper paper dust absolutely everywhere. There we go. Okay, so all we need to do now is stick our letters down. Do we like it like that? A bit more across the middle. I think that will work rather lovely. Okay, so I can do this in two ways. I can either use the super thick slap it on, butter the back and stick it down, which is what I probably will do, or um, I could use 3D foam pads. Like so, or any size foam pad that you have to hand. Um, but I think I'm gonna use the gel medium. Take the lid back off again. Give my spatula a wipe. And then let's do the E first. Just take some of that gel medium, butter the back, and then we can pop that in place. Take the V.
lift that one off and then we can add the O. So this will then grab into all of those corrugated cardboard bits, grab onto the burlap and be a, a wee tad more stable. See, it doesn't matter if you start to cover things up like that small tag. Move that over a little bit. Because that texture, you know the texture's there. And it all adds to the interest to the page. Or not, you may not be interested in this kind of page at all. You may hate it. But that's fine. Let's see. Yes, I like that. Now, it's missing something. Let's have a look. What is it missing? I know what I'm looking for. I just can't remember what I did with it. I put it down somewhere, which is always the case. I have a punch, yeah, a butterfly punch. Here we go. This is a stamping up butterfly punch. So I'm going to get a couple of little butterflies. And I think. And grunge up the edges just on three. So grab that potting soil again. Like so. of blue in there as well. Let me just grab, I have got a um, garden patina archival ink, here we go, which is a really nice kind of turquoisey uh, colour. So I have my blending foam already underneath, stored securely, get that spatula out of the way. And a second blending tool. Let's just grab some of that and let's just see if we can add a little bit of that patina colour into those butterflies. Here we go. A little bit just so there is a hint of the colour. Just like that. Okay, so what we can do now is just go back with that brown. Darken up the edges. Better. Just add a little bit more of an edge to them, and then I think we're ready to stick them down. Now, I will use some small 3D foam pads to add these to the page. That's it. Just darken up the wingtips, just a little. There you go. 
just adds a little bit of a frame, a little bit of a border, just helps them stand out a little bit from the background. So I'll grab a craft knife and I have a little foam dot and then we can strategically place these around the page. I think maybe there. A bit more texture. One more. Don't have much look with these foam pads. Here we go. I always end up getting them stuck to my elbows. I once went on vacation to Miami and when we arrived in Miami, unpacked the suitcases, I found one of the um, squares, one of these tiny little foam square tops that you peel off when you're sticking it down. Um, it obviously got itself in the suitcase somehow. See, outing and crafting, just you just can't escape from it. Unless, of course, there'd been a crafter in the other room before us. Anything's possible. And then one more, I think, just up there. Now, just to finish that off, I've got some faux pearls. I think what I'll do is I'll add one to each the backs of the butterflies. Self-adhesive pearls. What would we do without them? And there we go. I think I'm going to call that a day. What do you think? I'm sure you'll let me know in the comments below. One last job, of course. Okay, so. 15th of the 6th. So that was a lot of fun to put together. I really enjoyed doing that and I hope you enjoyed watching it too. So if you did enjoy it, please give it a thumbs up, share the video with all your friends. And if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video. That's all from me for now. I will see you all again real soon. Bye for now.